Okay, the observer. So, even though this is repetitive, it's good to do it again. You know, like, this is a mug, okay? This is an object. Uh, and is it, you can, you can either nod or shake your head. Is anybody this mug? No. So, so, if I hide the mug, are you the mug? If the mug passes before you, are you the mug? So the observer, even if a mug is in front of you, you're not the mug. And even if the mug is coming and going, you're still not the mug. And even if the mug disappears, sometimes it's here and sometimes it's not here, still the mug is not you. Yeah, that's quite clear. So, recognize that this is a meaningless object. So it seems to be quite easy to have detached observation. It hasn't got any special significance. It's not really, you know, it's not, you know, so otherwise you'd be a mug if it was special, you see. I had to put that in there. But it's not special. So when, when, a, when an object is meaningless, it seems to be easy to have detached observation. There is like a space. And no one is confused that they might be the mug or is sort of like confused that they could ever be a mug. Let's go next to thoughts. So thoughts are passing by, like little, you know, there's a thought, and then there's no, that's gone, and then there's another thought, and that's gone. So, and then there's also that which is observing when thoughts are here, and when thoughts are not here, and when thoughts are, are passing by. There's the observer of thoughts. Is, is anyone here a thought? Yeah. Your, your thought? Okay. So, in this moment, yeah. so if they are your thought now? I'm that which observes thoughts. Yeah, good. So there is that which observes thoughts, which is not thoughts. So the observer of thoughts cannot be a thought. So, and also, I mean, if you want to go, so. Uh, the observer of thoughts can't be a thought because thoughts are coming and going. You know, can you be an object that passes by? The observer of a passing object or a thought is not a thought. So the next thing is um, there is that which is um, if the observer of thoughts is interested in thoughts, then go to the observer of that observer. So let's say there is an observer, and that observer seems to be having difficulty in being detached from thoughts, then go to the observer of that thought, because that is an interested observer. That's an observer that's hooking in. So is the observer of the interested observer interested? Has that got any interest in thoughts, you see? So you just take it out until... The, and the pure observer, thoughts do not exist, because where... When something is totally meaningless and has no interest, it ceases to exist. Just like there's so many things in this room which people aren't aware of. That's because they're meaningless, so it's not registered. It has no... Meaningless things are not registered. You know, you can walk past and you don't remember how many trees you walked past. Because they're not registered. So that's thoughts, and there's the observer of thoughts. Then, um, here's another nice one, the body. You know, is anyone confused that they might be the body? The way to do the body is if there's any, if there's any experiencing a body, then, you know, the body is a shape. Like, you know, like this has a shape, yeah? This bo the, the cup has a, a body, yeah? It has a limit. Can everyone see the limit of this? It's like there. So that which is observing the limit, is, the, is, that, is the observer of the limits the li any, in any way connected to this limited object? No, it's not. See, that which observes a limited object is not limited. Okay? So if there's awareness of a body here, by any, if anyone's lost in the body, you know, it has a shape. So that which is observing the body, is the observer of the body a body? No, it's okay. So the observer is not a thought, the observer is not a body. Now, what about if suddenly a feeling was here? You know, there's a couple of things with feelings, you know, it could be, well, there's different types of feelings. Okay, we'll, we'll talk about exhaustion or tiredness, yeah? 
So, like some feelings are like fuzzy and all over the place, aren't they? A bit like a big cloud, you know, like enveloped in a fog of exhaustion or tiredness. But that comes and goes, doesn't it? Like something observes when tiredness is here, and something observes when it's going, and something observes when, it, when it's uh, changing in the now. So the observer of tiredness, is the observer of tiredness tired? No. no. Okay, and if there was a feeling that's, that is coming or going, or a feeling anywhere that's coming or going, that which observes a feeling coming and going, or if, even if a feeling is here right now, is the observer of the feeling a feeling? No, okay. So it's not a feeling. Even if there was a feeling or a body in the room, or there was a thought, the observer is not that. So anything that can come and go, anything which can change, there is that which observes that which can come and go, that which can change. Yeah. If, and if the observer of whatever is coming and going, whether it be a body or thought or a feeling, um, okay, oh, there's, yeah, so what about time? Is the, does the, that which observed time, is that in time? No. What about location? Is there any sense of location right now? And if there is a sense of location, is that which is observing or witnessing location? Is that in location? No. Okay. And if that, in the, if what you are now in your experience, if that is limited, has any form of limit or boundary, or any kind of shape, then go to that which is observing that. Even if it feels like, oh, it's as big as this room. Big as this room, but what's observing is big as this room. Or even if it's whatever it is. So be the observer. And if anything hooks in, and if things are like, if there's, if there's observing and then hooking back in, there's that which observes in and out. So, and there is an observer of in and out which is not affected by in and out, going in and out of things. So just go to that and just keep going to that until one is in the infinite, you know. Because the observer cannot be in any kind of limitation. Because if it's, lim if it's limited, if the observer is limited, then what's observing that limited observer? And is that observer can that be limited? If there's any experience of limited, what's observing that? And if that observer is, is identified with the limit, then what's observing that observer? Is there an observer which has no identification? And is that limited? Okay. So that's... Uh, I'm going to stop it there.